Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, I should say. Uh, Ed Talaskis here at Random Walk Trading. Hope you guys had a good Labor Day weekend. So, get you guys on the air here. There we go. Morning, Peter. Morning, Robert. That'd be me. Okay. All right, let me get some screens moved around here. Used to doing this at nighttime. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, all right. Let's get the. Uh, <clears throat> we'll get our normal disclaimer stuff out, and then we'll kind of dive in a little bit. Get everything situated. So. Uh, and our normal disclaimer is that uh, Rand Walk is not a broker dealer nor investment advisor. Uh, this presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and what level of risk you're really willing to take. Uh, we're not making any specific trade recommendations as the risk of losses in trading options can be substantial. So please be aware of all your risks before placing any trades. Um, and actual P&L could vary uh, according to liquidity, commissions, and slippage. So um, purposes and so if I figure what we do today is just some, some basic uh, calls and puts, um, and then we'll kind of branch out um, into verticals and you know, some creeks, um, and then start getting toward into some of the butterflies um, and collar type stuff. But um, like I said, I, I know some of you guys are really green, but uh, I'm just trying to keep it uh, really basic uh, today, and then we'll um, get into, into verticals next time. So, so in, in general, you know, if you want to get into the stock market, you either can buy buy stock um, or you know some people um, will sell stock sell short um, but usually if you sell short you're, you're going to need uh, some capital because uh, the margin requirements could be substantial um, so most people just you know buy a stock hope it goes up uh, collect their dividends and then they can live off the cash flow and live off the dividends um, in the portfolio um, what an option does is it gives you um, a call option gives you the right to, to, to buy stock at a certain price and you're going to pay a premium like your insurance, uh, house insurance or car insurance uh, premium. Um, you're going to pay a certain amount of amount for, for that call um, or put uh, in that insurance policy, so to speak, you know, is hopefully the amount that can replace the, your home's value or your car's value. But um, uh, when we buy a call or put option, we pay, you know, a, a premium or a marked price of what that call or put should be um, at this particular um, price. And um, you know, some people buy out of the money options, will buy an option, and uh, it's out of the it's what we call out of the money, where the strike price is above the current price. Um, you're going to find that the call option is generally cheaper, um, and, and then you're hoping it's going to continue to run up and you make money. Um, same thing with puts, and uh, we'll pull, we can pull up. Um, let me go through the basics, and we'll pull up Thinkorswim and, and do a couple. Couple simple examples and stuff, but so this blue line here is representing you know, the risk graph of what a call option would be. If you pay a certain amount of premium, and you hope as the market goes up, um, the price of that option also goes up. But if the market falls, you can lose the entire premium of whatever you paid for. So if you paid two dollars for a call option, um, your maximum risk is going to be two bucks for paying for that call option. Likewise, if you buy a put option um, and you pay $2 for a put option because you're bearish and you think the market's going to tank, um, you make money as the market goes down. But if the market continues to run up or just kind of stays where it is, like it's been doing for the last 40 days, um, you can lose a uh, premium that you paid for that put option. Um, another scenario is you can you can sell um, a call or put, and in this case, we're selling a, a put. And by selling a put, you have an obligation to deliver uh, the stock or whatever your underlying is at a certain price. Um, so, and like I said, we'll use uh, and then we use Apple as an example. Um, and if you sell a, a put on Apple um, at 95 bucks, and you know you're selling that 95 put, you're hoping by expiration. That, that put option expires worthless, so it's got to be at 9501 or out of the money in order to collect that premium. So if you collect a dollar or sell that put, um, which is fine, but if, if Apple comes out 
and for whatever reason the market tanks, Apple goes with it, um, you have you know unlimited risk to the downside. So not a big fan of unlimited risk. No. And likewise, if you want to, if you want to sell calls, you know um, some people will sell you know, calls against stock to, to collect some premium. If you sell a call and collect a dollar, um, you know out of the money, uh, you collect that dollar, and you're you're hoping that you know the stock doesn't go too far um, uh, advanced. Uh, if you if you're long stock and um, have a sell a call option against it, you don't want to make sure that uh, you want to collect that premium. And um, you know, call expires worthless um, at expiration. And if it goes down, you know you get to collect the two bucks, but your long stock is going to you know, suffer um, because you know it's you know, the risk graphs. Oops, let's draw a line here. Because a long you know long stock, the price goes up, you make money. The price goes down, you lose money. So um, so yes, you're going to make your, your dollar that you collected on the call option that you sold, but you're going to be losing money on your on your stock. So, Oops. All right, so in general, and, and like I said, over the, over, the, over the weeks, we'll get into a little bit more detail on each of these so caveats, but you know, when you buy an option, you know, the owner has the right buy that underlying at the strike price um, that you paid for it. And um, likewise, when you sell an option, you have the obligation of, of selling the underlying stock at a particular strike price being sold. Um, they're, they're by, you, by combining different options, you know, buying or selling, you can create different risk ratios, different trades, and you know, butterflies, uh, condors, and, um, and we'll get into some of that but um, options are considered a decaying um, asset or a decaying like option. I look at decaying option. Um, but it's a decaying asset that you know, many things called Greeks can affect the price, uh, volatility, uh, gamma, uh, rho, vega, um, those types. And, and negative theta, when you buy just a straight call or put, um, you know, uh, kind of eats away at your the insurance premium um, that you're buying or selling. So that's. Uh, I'm going to do a couple examples. So here we got Apple, and, and the other thing and we'll talk about this too is the is, you know, which month do you want to buy, and it depends on your um, you know, technical. Um, analysis. Um, you know, where do you think the stock is going to be at a certain point in time? You know, you know Apple right now is at uh, 107.89. Um, if you're, let's pull up a chart here. And what I like to do is look at um, a weekly and daily chart, and uh, hopefully they're both in agreement, where the weekly is going up, the daily is going up. Um, that way, you got a greater likelihood of, you know. Being on the right side of the trade, as they like to say. Uh, so let's look at Apple. And we can see on the weekly chart that, that Apple is above the 50 day moving average. Um, and then on the daily chart, uh, Apple's making what they call a golden cross. The 50 day moving average is going above the 200 day. Um, so definitely. You know, bullish for, for the Apple fans, but um, they got their iPhone event you know coming out tomorrow. Um, it could be some people you know buying ahead of it. The, um, uh, the one thing that's a little bit concerning is, is the volume is, is you know not as high as I'd like to see it. You know when I when we kind of cross above the 200 day with the 50 day, I like to see some volume there. It's been kind of below average. Volatility is uh, in the bottom of 12 percent. So if you're buying a straight call or put Having that ID rank in the lower um, third or the lower 25% um, is usually a good thing. Um, so, and the first thing you have to assess is, okay, where do you think the price is going to be um, in 30 days? I mean, do you think it's going to be, you know, 110? Do you think it's going to keep going up? Um, you know, looking at the weekly chart, you got a little bit of a, dotum, a double bottom happening here. So, if it crosses you know, above the 111-ish. Uh, that could be very bullish for the stock. Uh, so you may want to look at uh, you know, maybe 120 is your is your target. 
So what we can do is um, let's look at um, what the 120 call is. Roughly 30 days out. We can use I'll use your regular October 20. That's 45 days out. Uh, and I'll look. I'll, I'll pull up. Um, I'll pull up the September 30s. And we're just going to do about eight strikes. So we kind of compare um, the price of what you're paying for those options are um, a little bit. Um, so volatility right now is about um, 20 point, 21, roughly the same. Um, and we're bullish. So we say 120s. Look at the 110s. One ten is here roughly. So, so if we're bullish on Apple, you know, and, and again, this is done just picking two months at random here. Um, I'm looking at the September 30th options. They got 24 days left, um, and then I'm also going to look at the October 21st options, which are 45 days out, almost almost twice as um, long as far as duration. Um, with the IV being as low as it is, we could buy, you know, and we're bullish, we can buy, you know, buy a straight call. And um, you know, we, if we think it's going to go to 120, maybe we're going to go ahead and buy the 110 um, uh, call. So if we use the September 30 options with only 24 days, you know, we're looking at roughly um, you know, 131 by 133. Um, so let's say you know, you know, we want to buy it, it's a buck 34 for the 110 option. If we the October 21st option and, and bought that same option. It's uh, you know basically you know, two dollars six cents, so it's about seventy cents more. Um, and it's like okay, I'd, I'd probably go for the cheaper option. Well, yes and no. Um, so what I'd like to use let's go to Greeks. Like I said, we'll get more in the Greek series as the weeks progress, but. At the same price, but what I've done here is I've changed my layout to show the, the, the Greeks, the, you know, Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega. Um, delta is basically for every one dollar move in the line, it's going to increase by, in this case, uh, thirty-seven point three seven or 0.357 cents for every one point move. Um, whereas if I buy the uh, more expensive option, I say more expensive, but um, in terms of just price, that's two dollars and five cents. My delta is a little bit higher. It's it's, a, it's almost um, you know forty cents per one one dollar move. So if you're expecting Apple to move ten points from a delta perspective, um, you know you can get more delta kick by buying that further out of the month option. Now the second thing is is you know, I'm getting a little bit Greek here is is the gamma. Um, gamma is at the right of change that your delta can change. So after a one point move um, and uh, underlying, um, this 30, 36 cents roughly plus six and a half cents, um, the new delta is going to be around 43 cents. So for the next one point move, um, it'll be you know, around 43 cents. Um, and you kind of repeat that process as it keeps moving up by the amount of, of the gamma. Now, the thing that I'll focus in here a little bit is on the theta. So you know, we talked about you know, calls and puts being decaying uh, assets, but what we want to look at is you know the thing you know, in this you think this you know, one ten is an insurance policy that we're buying for you know dollar thirty four, or we can buy one at two dollars and three cents. And the trade off is um, you know this one ten is cheaper, but the amount that it's decaying. You know, so one of the things that affects that price is um, you know, the theta is, is minus 0.04. So when you're buying a straight option, you're going to lose four cents a day on this particular option. Now we have to take into consideration movement of delta and the gamma and the vega, but from just a theta standpoint, if we just sit here, like the SPX has been doing pretty good for the last 30 days, uh, you're going to lose four cents a day. Um, whereas if you go a little bit further out in time, um, the theta is only three cents. So um, 
Oops, let me see what can the one ten option be. Yeah, so three cents. So that would be right now the two I want to say three cents. So you're saving a penny a day as far as theta eating away at your insurance policy. Um, so if all things were the same, um, if, from a theta perspective, you're going to lose three cents. Um, if, it, if you know Apple just sat here at 107 or 108 roughly, um, you're going to lose that amount of premium you know, by 45 days. And eventually, it'll eat away at all your premium as we get closer and closer to the expiration. Now the other group that comes into play that is Vega, um, this is what I call the wild child sometimes. Um, I call it wild child because if volatility pops, um, it, uh, it can really um, add a little zip uh, to your step or add zip to your option that you're, you're buying or selling. Um, if we're buying, you know, we want you know, Vega to go up um, and Vega will typically go up, um, especially when we get closer to earnings, you know, Vega will have a um, when Vega is positive, this is some let's say 11 cents. For every one point increase in implied volatility, uh, you're going to gain 11 cents. Um, so we have to keep you know all these creeks in mind that, that helps you know determine what the price of this um, option that we're paying for. Um, now, you know, if Vega was um, uh, high, you know, let's say for example, you know, sometimes you, you know, you, you, let's say Apple's having earnings in two days, and um, you know, volatility would obviously most likely be higher, and um, and that's probably the worst time to buy just a straight option because the, the volatility is going to be so high, and, and after earnings, volatility typically will decrease, and, and that decrease is going to hurt the price of your option. So, you know, many beginner students sometimes will just buy a naked option the day of earnings, and uh, the stock goes in their direction, but they still lose money. When they lose money because the Vega effect hurts the price of just buying that straight option. Um, now, if you were uh, bearish, you know, as we were, you know, we wanted to buy um, the 105 put because we think Apple's going to, we think Apple's going to go down. I mean, chart-wise, I'd say it's a bullish setup, but it could, you know, break down and, you know, say so decides, you know, um, they have their little event tomorrow and, and uh, they don't really woo the investors or. Um, an Apple tanks to you know say 80 because uh, no one's really impressed. Um, in that case, you know, buying option, um, the Vega is going to help you because as every as volatility increases, you know, the oh it got filled. Interesting. Okay. Um, that, we'll talk about the bull session. <laughs> That's our Facebook trade. Um, the the put option, which is you know positive. So when you're looking at uh, the Vega on puts, um, and the Vega is positive, um, and you want, and you're in a bearish stance, like you think the market's going to crash. We could have used SPY, but it could be any stock that you have a bearish position or bearish uh, bias on. Um, if you buy this straight put, um, you know 105, you, you get almost uh, 10 cents of positive Vega, and as the market moves down, negative delta in a put is a good thing uh, because that's going to you know, make your price of your premium or the price of your option increase. Um, uh, for every $1 move, you're going to gain um, you know, 29 cents or almost 30 cents uh, for every one point move to the downside. Plus, you're going to benefit by getting um, almost 10 cents um, on an increase in implied volatility. So if we get a flash crash or something, then an apple goes to 80. Um, you're going to be you're going to be cheering. Um, now, just as we did with the call options, you know, this is the 105 uh, puts roughly buck 10. Um, if I go out to um, let's see the October options, it's a buck 74. So going further out in time, um, I'm paying more for that option. But you know, just like insurance policy, you don't buy house insurance when the hurricane is you know 200 miles off, <laughs> 200, 200 miles down the road. Uh, you want to buy long before it. Um, but with this longer time and um, you know, with this 105 and you know, 175, I'm paying more for it. But I got you know 45 days uh, of coverage versus only 24 days. Now going further out in time when the, the implied volatility is low. Is, is a good thing because um, the implied volatility is that I'm getting 14 cents versus 10 cents. Um, and like I said, when the volatility uh, decides to pop, 
an increase, you're going to get a you know, 14 cents from the increase in implied volatility, and you're also going to get you know 34 cents from the gain of the negative deltas uh, by buying you know just the straight puts. Um, so that's kind of how. Uh, let's just pull up one of these because mm -hmm. we're talking puts. Put both in here so we can kind of compare them. Let's turn off one. So another question that comes up is like, okay, you, you, you got to figure out, it's like, okay, which which month do I want to buy? Um, and then you know, what do we expect the underlying to to move to? Um, so when we looked at the chart, yeah, we're, you make a judgment call saying, okay, it's going to go up, uh, maybe to 120. Um, some people may say, no, I think this is going to putter out and Apple's going to retreat and we head to 80. So you're making a, a judgment call as far as what you think the underlying is going to do. Now, we, we don't really care. I mean, you know, we're looking for good risk-reward ratios as far as trade setups, um, but what are the likelihood that you know, it's going to hit you know 120, or it's going to hit 80. Um, and what we can do is, when we looked at the um, option chain, we can look at the implied volatility. So I just changed this to show the implied volatility and, and the deltas. So that same put, you know, has um, you know you know delta close to you know, almost 30, the implied volatility of 19.6. Um, if I go further out in time, um, 105 will be closer at the money. It's a 19% volatility. But what we do is calculate what we call the expected move. Um, in some of our um, uh, collar books or broken wing butterfly books, we talk about you know, calculating the expected move. Um, we can also use the delta, you know, 16 delta on the puts um, or calls, but you can also use the um, um, probability analysis and think in where your brokerage firm is. Um, and I'll show you how to do it regularly, you know, on how you how do the calculation. But um, so for the September 30th option, if we're bearish, um, this is a plus or minus one standard deviation based upon the implied volatility. Um, you know, we're looking on the downside of you know, 101.61 10, versus, you know, if I look at the October 21st, it's 99.28. You know, it's just a, you know, volatility is roughly the same, so these numbers are, are pretty close because volatility is so. Uh, so low. Now, one of the concepts with with volatility is when it's low, the distribution curve gets very uh, you know, tight, um, and, the, and the plus or minus one standard deviation gets flatter and flatter, so to speak. But uh, as implied volatility increases, uh, the range, or, you know, the range at which you know, depending on which month you pick, is going to expand. Um, so, looking at our profile. I can simulate what we just saw in the probability analysis and get us pretty close by changing this to the other <laughs> So for our September 30 option, this is the 105 put, this gray area is giving us the boundary of the plus or minus one standard deviation. So if you're bearish on the stock and you hope it goes down, you know, the lower one standard deviation line as it appears right now is at 10164ish, um, and you can you know you've been looking. I can set this to set percentages for the standard deviation. So I'm just clicking on that to get standard deviation. So. 
So I just set my offset to the to the, the boundaries of the plus or minus one standard deviation. You can see the impact um, on your PNL. So if Apple closes um, at expiration, expiration, it's you know almost thirty two hundred dollars um, for that particular option. But if it continues to you know go up, um, your your break even um, is is one oh. 103.89, roughly. Um, so, you, 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 like I said, if you got a bearish stance, you want this to keep going to the downside. Um, so, when we're picking particular strategies or, or strikes, we're, we're looking at what I call the backyard. I'm, I'm calling this this gray area the backyard. Um, when volatility increases, the backyard gets bigger. It's going to take you longer to, to mow the backyard, um, and the dog's got more room to, to run around. Um, but when volatility gets short, very tight or very low, like it is now, you know, VIX is, I think, at 12 and a half, um, the backyard, I can get done in about, you know, 10 minutes. Um, but the backyard gets smaller and smaller as volatility gets larger. The um, other thing is the further out in time is we can go out and look at um, the October 3rd, 21 option. So, same strike, we're just going further out. You notice the backyard increased a little bit. Um, didn't increase a whole lot because A, the volatility or implied volatility is, is pretty much the same as um, the previous one. Let me go out to November. Whoops, 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 hang on. Go back to October. Um, yeah, I forgot to change the date, so it stayed on 9.30. So if I go out, my mistake. Let's go out. October 21st, and notice the backyard got a little bit bigger. Uh, so this this backyard now, um, I can almost put a little bit of a swimming pool back here. It, it, it went, it's got bigger because we went further out in time. And I'll, I'll just exaggerate that point by going to November's options. Now the November 105 puts it 335, almost three times as much as the September 30th options. But uh, let's look at what the backyard's looking like. The backyard's pretty darn big. We can have a nice little uh, party back there, a couple of swimming pools, a band, whatever. Um, you know, this backyard's getting you know, pretty big, so you have more opportunity to benefit from a downside um, if that's your you know, prognosis of what the underlying's going to do. But um, the, the two things that you know, you know, to look at is, is a, you know, where do you think the underlying's going to go? And then two is the strike or the strategy I'm picking inside the backyard. Um, so what I mean by that is, um, you know, you say, hey, I want to go out and uh, I'm, I'm really, um, really bearish, and I'm going to buy. I'm going to say the 95 put. So this 95 put, in a sense, all the way in November. But you know that likelihood is, is outside is outside the yard, so not a you know not something that, that I would entertain. I mean, some people can speculate, but um, you would like to you know play in the backyard and, and you know, the strikes from ninety seven to one eighteen in November, um, and, which is where we'd like to kind of play. Um, if we can set up a strategy that you know has our profit area you know somewhere or all um, this area in the gray. Um, is, is where we like to kind of see the trade kind of, you know, expire. You know, if you, you know, maybe have a wing butterfly or a vertical, um, we'll kind of get into that. But if you're just doing a straight option or you're selling a straight option, um, uh, now on the flip side, instead of buying this, um, you, you decide you want to sell it. So here you're selling um, the 95 put for 88 cents. Um, not that I'm recommending this. I'm just showing this as an example. And we, we talked about unlimited risk. Well, you're going to need, you know, roughly ninety-four, thousand dollars to put that position on because it's essentially treated as unlimited risk. Um, so I'm just going to shrink it some. So you know, if Apple tanks to eighty, you know, you're going to lose fifteen grand. But you, you're going to say, oh, I collected eight hundred seventy bucks. You know, so that's what we're kind of. Um, you know, talking about as far as applications because 
when this option you know, expires, you know, in the money, um, and the stock's at 90, you have to deliver that stock um, and, and, and pony up to the, the table and say, you know, here's my 94 or whatever um, money is, and uh, the person that you know bought that, um, you know, they're they're going to you know, be happy because it's going to be in the money. Uh, but uh, so that's just a simple example of um, just kind of buying and selling uh, straight options. Um, so, all right. So, any questions on that? So, all right. Let's. Um, And like I said, um, I know we touched on some of the creeks, um, and we'll kind of uh, talk about that a little bit more uh, next time. Um, but just as uh, kind of a sneak peek, um, you know, let's say we're bearish. Um, we want to buy. We want to buy at 105 put, but you know, a dollar 74 seems expensive. We can sell options against it. Yes. I'll just sell the 100 put against it. So instead of spending a dollar seventy-four, I'm collecting sixty-four cents on the 100 put that we're selling. So my total cost per contract is is a dollar ten. Um, so you re reduce your cost. But you know, we, as we talked about, you know, with the backyard, let me change the backyard to. There we go. So, uh, so, so instead of paying a dollar seventy-five or a buck seventy-four, I mean, lock that in. You know, we can pay a dollar ten, and whatever the price you pay for that spread, and in this case, you're long and vertical. Your reward is the, the, the width of the strikes minus the, the debit that you pay for it. So five dollars minus a buck ten, you, you get an opportunity to make three dollars and ninety cents if you're past you know under you know, hundred bucks at expiration. Um, so what we like is good risk rewards. In my rough rule of thumb is you know the the, the, the put that you're selling um, should be one third or one third the price of the long put or call, whatever if you're bullish. Um, or another way to look at it is the width of the strikes, and 25% you know, of the width of the strikes. So, um, you know, buck uh, or uh, 105 minus 100 is five, and if we take uh, you know 25% of that, that gives us a buck 25 max that I want to pay for a spread. Um, in this case. Um, is a is a buck ten, so the first report on this is pretty good, and um, uh, and there's other ways to kind of you know get this trade even for cheaper, uh, which we'll get to um, in, in the coming weeks. So, um, but that's just kind of a quick coming attraction um, of what's coming up. So, all right, is everyone good with that? Yeah. Jump back in. All right, so so we touched about you know um, the right of buying on the underlying at the strike price, and um, when you sell an option, you have the obligation of selling the underlying um, at that strike price sold. So um, uh, one of the things that um, you hear is uh, you know in the money, you know at the money, or out of the money. Um, and it's like, okay, where's all the money? Um, so, so, from a basic terminology standpoint, out of the money is when the strike price that you're looking at is a, um, above the, the, the or say in, in puts, it's going to be below. So, in the case, so we'll use our put example here. So, let me uncheck this. So, puts that are above the current 
uh, or I mean below the current price, uh, will be considered out of the money. Um, so since so Apple's at 107.83, so any strike that you pick, you know, to the left of this line will be considered out of the money. Um, anything below this would be considered in the money. Um, in the money because there's time value, there's intrinsic value uh, that make up the price of these options, and, and we'll get into that um, in the coming weeks. But um, at the money is, you know, basically right at the money. So if Apple's it's almost right at 108, and there's a, a 108 strike, which I don't think there is, might be in the front month. Yeah, front month there is. Uh, Look at the, let's look at the uh, September. So this is at the money. You know, this is front month, September 30th. And you notice the price is you know two dollars twenty eight. I said, eh, that's expensive. I was like, well, you're right at the money. And if you, know, you look at the deltas, let's uh, let me kind of. Simulate that, and we'll put the 105 that we had earlier, and that was um, out of the money. So you see them show the example here: 108 put, paying two dollars 28 cents for it, versus an out of the money because the 105 is to the left. It's 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 lower than the strike price. Call if you just kind of flip it around. Um, if we we're if we we're looking at calls, out of the money would be to the um, to the right, in the money would be to the left. Um, but at the money, you know, if we look at this, you look at our, you know, the creeks that we briefly touched on. You, you have minus 510 on 10 contracts. So for every one point move to the downside, you're going to make 510 bucks. Um, for every one dollar move, you know, past the first dollar move, um, the next delta after the one point move would be uh, 75 plus. Um, you know, minus 510, that accelerates your, your deltas to the downside. So um, if we keep going down here, you know, the P&L is going to go up pretty dramatically. But uh, let me check this. But what I wanted to show you is at the money, you're minus 512. If we compare that with the out of the money put, your delta is only minus 297 so um, from a delta standpoint yes it's more expensive but you're going to make money quicker because it's at the money um, and typically at the money you're going to have a pretty good healthy um, dose of gamma and a good healthy dose of delta so if you've got a strong directional bias and you you buy at the money um, and you do expect to move to the downside um, you can you can you know, make some um, money faster buying at the money versus out of the money. So and if we compare, let's compare the, um, uh, so this, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at, let's look at theta next. So um, the out of the money, you're, you're going to lose $39 a day versus at the money, you're going to lose 44 You lose a little bit more, but that's the trade-off. So yes, you're, you're going to lose $5 more uh, per day, but even the, the you know, it's, it's, it's a give and take. You know, it's sort of like you, you can't have your cake and ice cream too sometimes. But um, so, so the you know the trade-off um, is, yeah, I'm paying a little bit more for theta, but I get a little bit more kicker in the delta. Because remember, our delta was minus 297 on that out of money. Um, but if you think this underline is going to move to the downside, I want to have more negative deltas. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, willing to pay that little bit of extra premium for that benefit, if you want to call it a benefit. Um, and, and like I said, the other um, creek that we kind of looked at is the Vega. So the Vega is you know, positive you know, 112. And we compare that uh, with the out of the money Vega. It's 97. Uh, so we get a sharp you know, bump in applied volatility. Um, you're out of the money. Um, doesn't benefit as much. So um, so that's kind of one of the trade-offs. You know, you can pay 223, which is a little bit more expensive up front, um, but you get the benefits is you're going to get a higher delta and you're going to get a higher Vega. 
Um, it can go out of the money. It's, it's, it's a cheaper, it's a cheaper car to buy, so to speak. Um, you're getting a little less pay, a little bit less delta. Uh, so for the money that you pay, so that's the kind of the trade-off. You know, you can pay two twenty-four, or you can pay, you know, dollar eight. Um, so depending on where you think that underline is going to do, um, it's just some factors. You know, there's no right or wrong. It's just uh, it's, it's options are about trade-offs. You know, if, if I'm going to you know, buy or sell an option or buy or sell a vertical, um, there are trade-offs. Um, and obviously, there's um, with verticals, um, you know, there's only so much you can make on a, on a five-dollar spread. You can only make five bucks. You know, twenty wide spreads, you can only make twenty bucks. Um, so you know, you can only control you know what you pay for those verticals. Um, so that's kind of Stepping up to what we're going to be talking about next time. So, just some, you know, some real easy, simple basics. Um, uh, hopefully, that makes some sense. Any questions? Did I lose anybody? Okay. So, with that, let's, um, so next time we're going to kind of delve more into the vertical spreads. Um, I'm on vacation after 5 o'clock today. Uh, I'm going to Kansas City. Um, and as I mentioned before, anytime I usually go on vacation, the markets go south. So um, if you have a bearish stance, <laughs> you can place a bearish stance to the downside. Um, and what I want you to do, um, so part of the homework, is I want you to practice logging into Office Analysis. Um, if you got any trouble logging in, you can call the office. Um, they'll help you out and uh, watch the new member videos. And um, so let me kind of flip screens here. And this is our Traders Lounge. So um, you can kind of jump in here. You can see. Uh, certain comments on different trades and stuff that we have, but um, what I'm do is um, maybe log in options analysis, and under help, um, there is you know a user guide, and there's also some free videos that you can watch. Um, so these are some random ones, but there's um, And you can see what's new. But there's also um, yeah, getting started. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm watching this under home. Getting started. So there's you know kind of walk you through it. There's some videos in here. Um, so I'm a little more advanced to get stuck. Don't worry. Um, but just kind of get your feet wet. Uh, kind of logging in. And like I said, we'll set up a, a folder uh, so we put our trades in. Log in. And as we you know, find uh, certain uh, trades and stuff, we'll stick in the folder. And um, you know, if you want, um, what we could do is um, um, I, I typically on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, uh, do like a trade of the day, or there's there's you know people can you know kind of chime in with uh, particular stocks and we kind of find a setup. Uh, we can pick one of those trades and, and, and put them on and kind of follow the trade. Um, so if there's one of those trades that you like, um, you know, let me know. Uh, we'll put them on. But um, but for the meantime, I just want to get you uh, make sure you can kind of log in, um, you know, watch the videos and stuff, and then um, yeah, next time we'll start um, building on uh, some of the different um, uh, basics, uh, basic verticals, and uh, we'll start um, uh, going a little bit more in depth uh, on that. So. All right. Any other questions? Okay. We're pretty close to wrapping it up. So yeah. So, um, so that's it for today. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll be back next Wednesday. Um, I might be in and out of the chat room. Uh, it depends um, how things are going. I'll be um, riding around in a uh, 53 Buick uh, for three days. So um, I'll let my hair down. But um, if anything, uh, you know, call the office, shoot me an email, um, and uh, we'll help you out. So. Uh, yeah, Rick, the, uh, this is being recorded, so there'll be a link that will be sent out. So um, you, should, uh, you should be able to have that. So. Cool. 
All right, guys, um, we'll see you in a couple hours for the uh, bull session. So uh, that's at 2 o'clock Eastern. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Yes. Yeah.